Now Glenn Beck has a new theory. Not only is Mitt Romney progressive, he's got somebody else he'd like to add to that list. The first real progressive president that we had that was this progressive was Woodrow Wilson. We have World War One. Mm-hmm. Then the next time we have a real progressive president FDR. is FDR, World War II. The next time we have a real progressive uh, president, we have the turmoil of the 1960s in and Vietnam. Vietnam. And now this one. You think we're going to walk away with this one without... I mean, I hope. I hope. I mean, we had a progressive president, and I know Republicans don't like to hear this, but he was a globalist and a progressive. George W. Bush. Uh, absolutely. George W. Bush, the problem with him was that he was too far on the left end of the political spectrum. No, there's no, there's no way, there's no way a human being can believe that. No, see, what amazes me is that, okay, it's one thing if it's some random guy in the middle of Mississippi named Cletus Jim Bob, who knows absolutely nothing about politics, and since he knows that people don't like George Bush, and he doesn't have a good legacy. He goes, the problem with Bush is that he's a Democrat, liberal, progressive, something on the left. That's one thing, right? Glenn Beck, his job, his job is supposed to be to follow politics. George Bush wasn't only not a progressive, he wasn't even a conservative. He is a neo-conservative which is like uber de duper de duper on the right wing of the political spectrum, where they're like, yeah, we are in favor of dominating the world and creating, like, uh, expanding the United States empire. That's so, that's as far away as you can possibly get from progressive without just calling yourself a fascist. Now, the other trick that Glenn Beck, is, this is become, quickly becoming my favorite conservative trick. Whenever you don't like uh, somebody, and you know that they don't help your cause, just declare that they are not you. So Bill O'Reilly did this. Remember when uh, Anders Breivik did the shooting in Norway and killed 77 uh, children? And in his manifesto, he said, I am a Christian terrorist. He called himself that, right? Bill O'Reilly went on the show and said, no, he's not a Christian. Dude, it says it right in his manifesto. He says, I'm a Christian. No, 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 Christians don't do that. So he's not a Christian by definition. So that's the way this works now? You just pick something that you say is inherently good by definition and nothing could ever contradict that, even if it's right in front of your face. So uh, everything bad, well, the first progressive, Woodrow Wilson, he's a bad president, he got us into war, he's progressive. Woodrow Wilson is a progressive, like the fucking Nazis or National Socialists. That was the name of the Nazi party, the National Socialist Party. But they weren't socialists. They were fascists. They just called themselves socialists. Just like in North Korea, it's called the Republic of uh, Korea or something like that. The Republic is in the name. Yeah, they're, they're a republic. They're a fucking dictatorship. Everybody knows they're a dictatorship. And Woodrow Wilson called himself progressive. He's the furthest thing. He was a vicious racist. That's well documented. That's not progressive, right? That doesn't... Look, uh, at least we know, while Glenn Beck might be going around redefining everything to suit his terms, at least we know he's consistent on this issue, right? So Glenn Beck is stridently anti-war. He's always been anti-war. He's saying, George Bush, that progressive wanted war, and then all the other progressives wanted war. War is bad. I've always been against war. There wouldn't happen to be a, a recording of Glenn Beck advocating the opposite, would there? The real story about Iraq can be found in the eyes of the children, 98% of whom have been vaccinated for diseases like polio or who are attending one of the 4,500 schools that have been rebuilt and restocked with over 8 million textbooks by coalition forces. You can also see it in the bravery and patriotism of the 19,000 newly trained members of the elite Iraqi Special Police Force and the 18,000 border agents who are now protecting Iraq's border with Syria or the amazing progress of Iraq's economy where over 33,000 new businesses have started up since the end of the war. The real story can even be seen in places you'd never even think to look. Like the fact under Saddam, virtually no one had even heard of a cell phone. And we only have to kill 189,000 of them to get them cell phones. 
that hypocrisy is awesome, man. He's like, yeah, of course, the progressives are for war. The World War II, World War One, and they got the Iraq War. George Bush was a progressive. He wanted war. He wanted war. I would never want war under any circumstances. Let me tell you all the reasons Iraq is great with this sappy music in the background. And by the way, I don't believe any of those numbers. Iraq is an absolute mess. There's still a war going on between the Sunnis and the Shias. Nobody likes the Kurds in the north. All types of different warring factions. There's bombings on a, on a weekly and monthly uh, basis. The place is in shambles, right? And where he's getting his information from, your guess is as good as mine, but it's not information. None of that stuff is true. But clearly, all that is beside the point anyway, right? The bottom line is, Glenn Beck is going around now pretending like he's anti-war, he's always been anti-war. Why? Because there's a Democrat in office. As Bill Maher termed it, uh, he's black tracking. You know what that means? Uh, disagreeing with Obama when he agrees with you. Changing your position because so, you know, Obama changed his. So Obama now all of a sudden is uh, pro-war in Syria, so Glenn Beck's like, I've always been anti-war. Next time there's a Republican president, watch. Watch when he flips again right back towards being in favor of war.